and welcome to another tutorial. It's been a while since I've actually done a tutorial. Um, I just finished a live stream earlier this evening, but I also wanted to do a tutorial um, this evening. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning how to route contact in FL Studio. I know it sounds a bit intimidating, but when you get down to it and you, you simplify everything like I'm going to hopefully do for you, it's really, really simple. And once you do it multiple, multiple times, you will be just fine. And realize that you're saving CPU power so you can run more effects and other VSTs, etc., etc. And your session is much cleaner and more organized and just much simpler to, to work with. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. First thing we're going to do is we are going to launch contact. Make sure that when you launch contact that you are using a 16 out or multiple uh, multi-tambra mode is what the technical term would be. Okay, so once contact is open, we are going to pick an instrument. We not, we're not going to pick an instrument. I lied. We're going to go to this processing tab or this gear plugin thing and we are going to set the input port. Now what the input put import input I can't speak input port is is it's basically sending it to a, a MIDI channel essentially kind of well you're not really sending it to a MIDI channel you're sending it somewhere within the program you're sending it I I I like to call it you're sending it in the cloud okay so once you've done that you set your input port you head over to this processing tab and you're going to set all of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Cool. Everything is set. We have our input port. We have our plugin. We should be ready to rock and roll. So the first thing we're going to do is we're, we're going to load up. Second thing, I should say. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to load up an instrument. I'm going to pick one that's not extremely heavy sample based cool cavern kickers works for me um, and then we're gonna load up another instrument we're gonna load up um, let's do rise and hit because I love rise and hit awesome so we notice here we have stereo channel 1 and then we have our MIDI channel 1 cool perfect we shouldn't need to touch the first instrument however on the second instrument we need to change the output port to 2. So the MIDI channel and the output should both be the same number. 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3 and 3, 4 and 4, and so on and so forth. Cool, cool. Now you're probably wondering, okay, now, Lennon, how do I trigger each of these instruments? Like, I'm, I'm getting the cavern kickers in here, and now you'll be at, get rise and hit. But how do I trigger them externally? and then route them to their mixer channels and then process them differently. Don't get your undies in a bundle quite yet. I'm getting there. All right, so now once we have all of our instruments up to eight, because the 16 out means you can have 16 mono channels, which means eight stereo channels, because stereo is two channels, mono is one. Do the math. Simple. Cool. So we're going to add a MIDI out is what it's called. And we want to make sure that we're receiving on input port 0, but we set contact to. And we want to make sure we're receiving on channel 1, which will be our cavern kickers. Cool. So now we trigger, let's rename this. Let's call it cavern kickers. So now when we trigger this, we are getting our cavern kickers. Awesome. Now how do we trigger rise and hit? Well, we're going to clone this. We're still receiving on input port 0, but we have a different MIDI channel, which is 2 right here, MIDI channel 2. So now, let's rename this and do rise and hit. Awesome. So now when we trigger this one, we should have rise and hit. It's very quiet, but we can hear it. Awesome. So you would do this all the way through. So if you have eight instruments, you would do that. Make sure, um, like if you have Scarby base, whatever. Um, we have our channel 3, 4, 5, 6, etc., etc., all the way up to 8. And then you would clone this, 
and or you can add a new one, whichever works best for you, and then we can call this base. We're still receiving an input port zero, channel three. So now we do this one, we're triggering the base. Cool. Awesome. So now how do how do we process these on a mixer? Okay. This this is this is important. This is important. So we're gonna call this contact. And I like to color things to keep things simplistic and organized. Contact. And this is routed to channel one, which is fine because this is a blank slate and say starting a new channel or starting a new project, whatever. Channel one works. So we're also gonna call this contact or control L. Um, it uh, links whatever channel is selected in your sequencer to the mixer. So now what this means, you have contact routed to one, channel one on your mixer. So cavern kickers, whichever is your, your channel one here, that does not mean this is also routed to channel one. This means it's routed one channel after contact in the mixer. So this would be channel two. And rise and hit is on channel two, so that means it's two away from where contact is routed, which would be three, and so on and so forth, all the way up to nine, or however many it goes to. So if we look here, if we select cavern kickers, we should have on channel two, and we do. There's our signal. Rise and hit should be on three. Very quiet, but you can hear it. And bass should be on channel four. Awesome. So now we should be able to process all of these separately, EQ, compression, re, uh, bus reverb, etc., etc. Awesome. Okay, now you're probably wondering, all right, I filled up all of these instruments. Now what do I do? I have eight instruments. I want to run another version of Contact. What do I do? All right, awesome. We're going to add another instance of Contact. Make sure you're doing multi-output. And this time, we're going to go over to the processing and instead of receiving an input port zero, we're going to go to one. Okay? And make sure you get over your processing and you do this again. If you don't do this, they will not work. They'll all come out of the same channel. And that's not what we want. We want to be able to process them separately, which, well, sometimes we do. Not always, but... So once we've done that, we can add our instrument, whatever instrument we want. Um, I'm going to pick whatever this is, the Balinese chameleon. Um, awesome. I've never actually used that. It's kind of a cool sounding. I'm not quite sure where I would use it, but I'm sure I'll find some use for it eventually. So we have stereo one, MIDI channel one. Awesome. We're going to route this first. We're going to call this, I'd like to call it contact two, just whatever. And being that if we had eight instruments routed in this one, so we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to this channel would be taken. Because remember, you can't just route all of these anywhere you want on your mixer. They have to be immediately following. So if you route any audio to channel four and then you go in and you add an instrument in contact and then you want to route this, it's going to be routed through channel four, but the processing is going to be the same. So you can either, you'll have to reroute your audio, which is, is simple to do, but to save you time, I always designate one, two, three, four, all the way up to eight, nine channels. In case I do use them, I, I just leave it. So now we're going to bust this one or route it to channel 10. Cool. And now let's add another instrument here. Let's add another instance of Evolve, except let's do Dumpster. We're going to change the output to two. And we are going to create, we're going to add two MIDI outs. And let's see, let's clone. Awesome. So now instead of receiving on input port zero, because what happens if we do this? If we receive on input port one, input port zero and channel one, we're going to trigger the cavern kickers in contact one, which is not what we want. So we want to change this to input port. That is really tough to say. Try saying that three times fast. Anyways, input port one and channel one. So now we should be able to trigger our Balinese chameleon. And it's on channel 11, because remember it's channel one is one away from where contact is routed in your mixer. And two, we're gonna make sure this is routed to input port one, and then channel two. And now we should have, I don't remember what we put on there, um, our dumpster. 
and it's really quiet. Oh, we probably have to trigger. It's on, there it goes. It's only a few samples there. That's not really how I pictured a dumpster to be, but okay. So, yeah, that is how to route contact in FL Studio in a nutshell. It's very, very simple once you get the hang of it. As always, you are more than welcome to leave me a comment, send me a message, tweet at me, whatever you need. If you have any questions, I'm always more than happy to help. I love teaching you guys this stuff. And um, please leave me some suggestions on what you would like to see, some tutorials. Um, if you have questions on anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I'm always open to suggestions. Make sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to YouTube because I'm going to certainly do more live streaming and I'm hoping to get more tutorials up once I can get a few lined up here and edited and find some time and all that stuff. So again, before I start rambling, thanks again for stopping by. I hope you learned something and have a great rest of the morning, the afternoon, evening, wherever you may be. And thanks for watching.